We are now talking to Washington tight end recruit, the number one tight end recruit in the state of Washington, Chance Bogan. What's going on, Chance? What's up, yo? What's up, y'all? Thank y'all for having me here. Absolutely, man. Come on, Chance. Do you want to look at this big noggin over here? I mean, this hairy. <laughs> Why well, you got to get on, bro? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. I, if you gave me a football, I'd throw it a million times at his face. I, mean, I wouldn't be able to shave it, knocked out unconscious, but okay. <laughs> oh, that's, that's true. Anyways, Chance, how are you and your family doing with this pandemic? Man, we're doing good. We're all really quarantining kind of way. We're not seeing too many people taking more precaution. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, we're all, we're all chilling now. So, let me ask you a question. What is it like being recruited when you really can't visit the school? I mean, obviously, you're from Washington. You're from the state of Washington. So, you're probably going to your the college team that you always wanted to play for. So, uh, what is it like being recruited by the coaches and, and sitting in these Zoom calls, meeting some of the players that you're going to possibly play with? What is it like? doing this whole Zoom conversation and being recruited by uh, a college football team? Uh, it's it's different. It's not what I thought it would be when I got to this point in time in life. Like, I felt like, like, I mean, I was on a visit to Oregon, but, like, that was all I got to do. I mean, I went on two visits to Oregon. I mean, I didn't really get to go to – I didn't get to go to uh, UW or nothing yet. So it was pretty hard. It's pretty hard to, like, really get a grasp of all the college stuff online, but it's, it's, it's going pretty good. So. so Washington having a new coach now in Jimmy Lake. This is his first year after losing Chris Peterson, who was a very good coach in college football, probably top 10, top 15 coach, and one of the best defensive coaches. So what was what was it about Jimmy Lake that swayed you to pick Washington over some of the other schools, including a lot of other Pac-12 schools that you were recruited by? Well, uh, the first time I ever talked to uh, Coach Lake, it was it was great. Like it was a great vibe. I like I like talking to all the coaches. It's like family, and uh, like I want to help Coach Lake be the first African American coach to win a uh, national championship. I want to be part of that. I want to be able to say I helped do that. So that's, just, that's another big one right there. Well, you could be the first person to smack Speedy in the back of the head. That would be good. <laughs> you haven't done that already. Oh, I have. I have <laughs> quite a few times. And and actually. I, uh, on the side of my uh, my desk over here, at my studio over here, I have a big fly swatter that I like to back him with, you know, smack him with a couple of times. You know? It's like one of these massive ones. And, and you actually, if you have the opportunity to watch the show, you'll actually see me do it a couple of times. But he, he, just looking at his face just annoys me sometimes. But uh, that's, just, that's just me. I mean, look at him. Anyways, we are talking to Washington tight end recruit, the number one tight end recruit in the state of Washington, Chance Bogan. Now, Chance... I had the opportunity to go on your Twitter, and I, I watched your story. And the story behind your father being sick and, and your family really, you know, behind you with everything that's going on. Tell us a little bit about that story uh, with your father getting sick. Well, it was more he uh, he's a diabetic, and uh, he was working a lot. Of, he was working a lot, working hard one day, and uh, I guess he forgot to take his insulin or whatever. So he uh, – had a stroke and he it paralyzed him and left him in uh, in ICU for a long time and he's it's been like this for like three four years now and he's just been yeah he's gained a lot of sense back he can talk now and like he can remember people so it's it's I mean it's hard but like I'm fighting through it for him he he knows what's up like it's my OG so. I was my rock. No, he's not my OG. So, well, <laughs> that's for sure. Well, I wishing him all the best. Uh, same here. Same yeah. here. Yeah, I, sure. I think it's an unbelievable story. It really is. And if you guys didn't get a chance to check it, go out and check out Chance's Twitter. The first feed that he has, it's it's about Chance and, and his family and his father and, and all the trials and tribulations they had and, and really how far he's gotten since, f since all these things have happened. So it's an amazing story. It, it really is. Thank you. So, where is your father? One of the biggest reasons you wanted to play football? Um, actually, I mean, he's, he's he's the one who put me in football. Like, he was a coach for a, for a youth team out in uh, Kent, Washington. So, I got on a year early, played a whole year early. I mean, I wasn't too good. Like, I I was gonna quit football when I was younger because I just wasn't good, and I just like didn't see the fun in it until probably fourth grade year. Grew a little bit and. It was it was over from then. I just loved it. Let's play DN. I played DN for most of my life, so it was 
So, yeah. so let me ask you this question. The tight end position. We've interviewed some of the best tight ends in the nation. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, probably we've interviewed probably the all the tight ends in the nation. Two of them in your conference, too. Two of them in your conference. One in or- Oregon and one in Oregon State. <laughs> now, the tight end position, you got to be big. You got to be strong. And now these tight ends can run a 40. I, I mean, seriously, when you when you look at Denzel Mims, he's a wide receiver. He's the size of a tight end. He's almost 6'3", 6'4". And mm-hmm. he can run a 40 in like 4'3". I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah. The athletic ability some of you kids have, it's it's unbelievable. Uh, do you see yourself at, w- looking at the position as a tight end, uh, playing a different position moving forward if you decide to go play professional football? Or do you think – um, moving forward in college football, you can develop more of your skills to become an NFL style tight end uh, in the NFL. Yeah, like um, the position of tight, the tight end position is changing drastically. It's not the same as it used to be anymore. Like, it used to be just this big body extra guy on the line, honestly. And the day, the time of that kind of tight end is kind of over. Like, tight ends are real, real more versatile than they used to be. And that's really where I stand. Like, I can, like, just the way I play receiver like routes, but still, you yeah, have the main the blocking and all of that. So, so two part question here. So, one, can you ever see the tight end position surpassing the receiver position in terms of overall value or impact to a team? And two, regarding financially, we saw Travis Kelsey and George Kittle both get big contracts and big extensions this offseason. Could you see it where the tight end position gets or the top tight ends get paid just as much? Probably not more, but probably just as much as re- top receivers. Yeah, on yeah, the way teams are starting to use receiver, I mean, uh, tight ends now, it's like they're going to be used so much in such a big part of the passing game and running game that they're going to have to start getting paid more. So I think they can, they're can. they on their way up. We are talking to Washington tight end recruit, the number one tight end recruit in the state of Washington, Chance Bogan. Now, Chance, the tight end position, and, and really college football as a whole, I, I've asked a lot of you kids what you think, and, and, and I think that college, college players should get paid. I really do believe it. With the NCAA, I believe with all the money that they make, with all these ball games and, and these players, they – Obviously, you get a full scholarship to go to college, but a lot of you guys are going to play two years, and then you're probably going to go into the NFL because if you're good enough to play in the NFL, and you're not going to finish your college education. So what did you get out of it? So I believe that college kids should get uh, um, some kind of money, or they shouldn't make money at signing autographs, or they should make money if they um, if they go in and you know, they have the opportunity to – uh, sell their own jersey. You know what I mean? So do you think college players should get paid? Absolutely. I've seen what college players really have to go through. Like, I've seen it a lot. Like, I have a whole bunch of friends that are in college, and they're D1 football players. I've seen the schedules they have to go through. It's vigorous. It's horrible. Like, it's not, I mean, it's not horrible, but, like, it's, it's pretty – it's a lot. It's a real packed schedule to do so often, and the amount of money that the NCAA makes, they should definitely. So another part, uh, two-part question with the Pac-12. One, they have the shortest season on the Power Five conferences this year. They only started about a month ago. Mm-hmm. And um, do you think you're going to have to play in those types of circumstances? Because they were, the, they were the ones that were the stingiest with the player movements and stuff like that. So that's number one. And number two, the parity of the Pac-12. You watch it all the time. You're on the West Coast. Um, was that a big reason you picked it? Because there's, there's a lot of teams that they're good every year, and then they pull off a weird upset or a bad loss or something like that. The games are crazy. So is that one of the big reasons? Well, big reasons uh, for for picking a Pac-12 school over maybe a. Team. Oh, oh, I, well, it was more Pac-12 because since I've been born, like I I traveled a lot, so like I've always loved Washington. Like a lot of people call me crazy because it rains over here and all that, but uh, like whenever I ever traveled, like I loved coming back home because it was just where I wanted to be. So I actually just wanted to be here. So that's kind of why I picked UW over yeah, any other school in the SEC or Pac-12. We actually, I actually have a partner, okay? Uh, I have a partner. I don't know if you know who he is. His name is Eric Coleman. He played in the NFL for nine years. He played for the Jets, the Atlanta Falcons, and the Lions. I do a show with him called The Weekend Crunch on Saturday. He, he went to Washington State. He went to Washington State. He was an NFL player. He was drafted in the fourth round by the New York Jets. He was a starter in the NFL for six years. It's an incredible – Yeah, he likes to stick it in my face, but he always loses the debate. So shout out to Der- Eric Coleman over there. I'm sure he's listened to the show. Eric, you always lose. I always win. Okay? That's all I'm going to say about that. But 
Do you see, first of all, what player in the NFL do you see your style of game like? And do you see yourself in the future playing in the NFL? I absolutely see myself in the future playing in the NFL. It's just it's what I'm going to do. That's like I already have my mindset on it, manifested it in my mind already. Like it's, it's my plan. But um, as a style, as a, somebody in the NFL, um, Travis Kelsey is the way he plays is I like I love the way Travis Kelsey plays. Although like my favorite player, Greg mm-hmm. Olson. Like if you look through my Twitter, you see I got some pictures with him and all that. But he's he's he was like my childhood favorite. But the way I see myself playing sometimes could be as like a slim receiver type, but like Travis Kelsey, because I watch his highlights a lot, the way he runs routes, it's it's kind of mimic the way I do it too. Greg Olson's one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. I yeah, met Greg Olson. I met him three years ago. He's one of the nicest people. And he'll interview with you. He'll hang out with you. He loves football. He loves basketball, too. He's a huge basketball fan, too. So uh, I love Greg. I think he was recruited for basketball, yep. too, but he yep. jumps football. Yep. And, and and it's a crazy story about his kids and and and, and how how he they saved, he saved one of his kids. It's, it's an incredible story. It, 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 Greg Olson is one of the nicest people. You'll ever meet. If you meet a professional athlete, he's one, he's one of those guys. I've met a million athletes. He's one of those guys that really stood out to me. So Greg Olson's a nice guy. So, um, in term, you mentioned the rain earlier. Playing in the rain a lot in Washington, obviously one of the, the, the coastal states. Have you ever played in a, like a drastically like almost thunderstorming, heavy rain game, yeah. like a muddy game? And if yeah. so, describe that kind of experience. Uh, actually, all the time, like. Little League all the time. Like, I used to play in grass, mud fields. When I was in the Little League because I was in the more not as organized teams. So, like, we played everywhere. And even in high school, man, I people hated it because I could always play without gloves. I always catch without gloves and all that. So the rain didn't really affect me as much. And I kind of love it. I, 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 actually, I do. I love playing in the rain. It's such it puts me at an advantage, honestly, because of the people don't know how to play in the rain. Yeah. 